Hey, how's it going? Guess who just recorded 45 minutes worth of audio for intros and stuff and didn't have their mic on? Me. I'm an idiot. Now, fossils are honestly a really common request on the channel. Ever since Twitch plays Pokemon, the Helix and the Dome Fossil are just intrinsically linked to the Pokemon Mythos. And while it would be very easy to pander to the very popular Helix crowd and do what would probably be the better run in general, today we're going to get back to a run that's more of a challenge. And honestly, there's not much to say about Kabuto other than today it's going to be some real isopod hours over here. You guys remember that meme? I do. I went into today's run very positive and I thought that maybe we'd find another diamond in the rough, but the fact of the matter is that the deck is stacked against our little shellfish, but I did utilize some new strategies, so at least we get to see something new and I get to learn something at least. A huge factor in depicting this run personally for me was that I thought Kabuto had huge egg move run potential, but I'll let you guys know why that's not the case when I do my closing thoughts of the video. But let's just get this intro over with and let me quickly say that I do solo run content often and if that is something that is of interest to you, consider subscribing to be kept up to date. Now more importantly, it's the likes and the comments that really help these small channels grow and help me get that word out. So if you're someone that's new or even if you're a returning viewer that normally never interacts or just doesn't think about that sort of thing, just scroll down and type in Dome Dude so that maybe we can get the algorithm to bless us and get this video recommended to more likes minded individuals. I really can't do this without you guys. Now if you ever want to see the rules to the run, they are always in the description of every video. If you need some clarification or if you're just curious, just check that out. And with that out of the way, sit back, relax, grab yourself a soda pop, and let's get into honestly an interesting run. Like with all my runs, I set Kabuto over Squirtle via the Pokemon randomizer and I edit the save for perfect IVs to keep the runs on an even playing field. Today's name will be Dome Dude and normally I don't like the names enough to make it the intro comment and the th on the thumbnail, but I did chuckle to myself the first time I said this out loud and I think it's perfect. Now let's get down to brass tacks everybody. Kabuto's level up learn set is trash. It's a garbage can. It's nothing but harden and scratch all the way up to level 34. And that means we just have to make do looking ahead to Brock. Initially, I thought maybe that the rock typing resisting normal moves from the Geodude along with a pretty solid 90 base defense would keep us healthy, while an 80 base attack could get us over the hump early, but let's see how that shakes out. While the early battles aren't too fast, they also aren't difficult, and I eventually take everything out, even the optional rival fight, and then I utilize one of my patented strategies that you've seen in other videos. Lightyear's junior trainer grinding has really came through to help runs out, and eventually you guys will see this on other channels and at first glance Kabuto does have a great moveset for this. Now generally you don't want to hurt the Diglett. You want to let it get you as low as possible and then you want the Sancher to finish you off so that you can rinse and repeat to get that sweet Diglett experience along with its stat experience. Now normally it's faster than the Metapods and Weedles but we have an early unforeseen problem. It's the fact that Kabuto is just too tanky. It's kind of a weird sentence but that rock typing resisting the scratch and the fact that I have to use Harden to avoid hitting the Diglett means that this one can take about 30 turns to get through and it's really not too awful but it's very slow and it just increasingly gets longer and longer as you do this more. Now I do try Brock some here and there and every attempt is just awful failures and let's just stick with the light years grinding for now. In this clip I'm level 13 and I have 35 HP. Since Scratch is only doing one damage to us and Harden only has 30 PP it means that it's not guaranteed that you can continue grinding. Now I am able to get past at this level, but even then you have to exhaust the full uses of Harden and you can quickly see how this starts to add up in time. By the time you hit that level 14 mark, that means that this fight becomes basically impossible to lose and you have to actually win it. This also means that I have to finish off level 14 inside of Iridium Forest and eventually I do hit that level 15 mark. And I haven't talked about Brock yet because honestly it's a little boring to show every slow and long failure but now we can get into some rock solid pokemon trainer action and honestly i really don't know what to say about this fight i tried this fight from level 10 all the way up to level 15 and this is the only level that i found for it to actually be possible now your base crit rate is just too low and you can't hope that you can just get lucky on earlier attempts and the real problem here is that you just don't have enough pp on scratch if kabuto had anything else that added some damage you could do this fight earlier but the strategy here is pretty 
pretty standard. You are really tanky for this fight as I mentioned. The high defense and the rock typing resisting normal means that you really don't have to worry about your health. They're not going to do much to you. In fact, it would actually be one of the very few fights that you would prefer the Geodude just to spam tackle because defense curl just makes things a lot longer. As far as the Onyx goes, you do outspeed it so you can use Harden on his bad turns and in general the only thing about this fight is just keeping your sanity as you slowly chip away at it until you finally achieve victory. I've been a little bit spoiled these past few months and I've done a lot of runs that make Brock extremely easy and I sort of forgot what it felt like to have a very awful Brock split but this is kind of what you expect when you only have scratch on the rock top. Either way that's one of the game's huge hurdles down and going towards Mount Moon I save at 1 hour and 6 minutes if you wanted to know the time and from there things just aren't that bad. But first I was curious about this sign here I haven't looked at it in probably 25 years but it says beware Zubat is a bloodsucker and I just thought this was really funny I kind of forgot about it. We probably all did and we could all agree that Zubat does suck at something and I'm talking about the game so get your mind out of the gutter you freak. I do skip water gun and Mount Moon and I'll talk about that in a second. It was a mistake. I'll be up front with you. You don't have to comment on it. You can can if you want to for the algorithm I guess. And if you're someone that wanted a really clean and optimized Kabuto run you aren't gonna get it. I like to clean up those good runs but the fact that this one takes over an hour of in-game time to get past Brock alone I'm just not gonna be doing four runs. I did some testing, but as we get further into the run, you're going to see that I make some mistakes and it's, I'm just not doing it over again. Instead, I will tell you about my original plan. It was to skip Water Gun, get through to Cerulean, and take on Misty immediately. I guess I had a bit of a stroke, but I just thought that my water typing would make her only use tackle and it would just be a really easy fight and that would allow me to get Bubble Beam immediately and I'd get a power spike. Now what's really obvious in hindsight and something that I just didn't think about at all was that being half rock typing means that I take neutral damage from water and it turns out that Misty wasn't going to be easy at all. Just look at how much damage the star you can do to me. And even early in this video once again one of my big plans have already gone awry and I need to adjust once again. Instead let's take a very quick look at rival number two. Now I'm at a decent level. I resist pretty much all of his attacks and in this first attempt I avoid sand attack and since I do that it's really not that bad at all. I will say that since I skipped water gun I do have to utilize a very early use of the badge boost on Harden just to make myself hit a little bit harder but that's about all there is to say about it. As far as skipping water gun goes it really only affects one fight. Here I opt to do the Machop and Geodude Hiker that guards the hidden elixir and all you have to do is set up Harden and that makes you do some pretty impressive damage to the Geodude so it's really nothing special it's nothing difficult. As far as Misty goes I return back to her at level 24 but it's still just as bad as it was. There's not really a win condition here and the battles aren't that close. My low special mixed with their high damaging moves is just too much to overcome and since the Brock split had already been pretty bad I figured that I'm better off just skipping this one for now so I make a tactical retreat and we continue on with the game. I'm not going to make a great time anyway so it's really not that big of a deal. Skipping ahead to the SSN, Kabuto can get body slam and that's just kind of a funny image in your head but it's also a dramatic upgrade for our damage and it's going to be very helpful indeed. I'll also pick up the rare candy guarded by the gentleman and we can just go straight to rival number three and this first attempt is just annoying for some reason I thought I'm just gonna set up some hardens here and then we'll just use body slam we'll sweep through the fight but what ends up happening is I get hit with a sand attack then I go for a body slam I miss I get hit with another sand attack and by the time it's all said and done I miss a grand total guys a grand total of six times before I rage reset because I'm not gonna do this to myself I'm not gonna just miss every turn it's frustrating and so it turns out that you really don't want to set up Harden on the Pidgeotto because Sand Attack sucks. So I just take it out as fast as possible with our shiny new toy and Body Slam. And from there, it's just kind of clean up. You can just pick everything off with Body Slam. It's a it's an easy fight overall, but Sand Attack's annoying. That's really all there is to say about it. Afterwards, I can return to Misty with better moves and a higher level. And this time, it's not too bad. That's not too surprising, I guess. It's really not that easy because I get blasted all the way down to 6 HP, but it is a first turn victory and it's much better than before. The important part here is that I get Bubble Beam and I get some coverage and to put it lightly, things have not been exactly smooth for Kabuto up to this point but hopefully it's going to pick up. I'll be skipping over Rock Tunnel since we are over leveled and have good moves for it so let's pick up in Celadon. Today I won't be able to skip over the Celadon Pokemon like I usually do because I need fresh water but I can also pick up a couple of things like the TM for Reflect, I'll also get Ice Beam, 
green, and I get the Pokey Doll just in case I want to use Mimic later. With the fresh water opening up Saffron, I can quickly backtrack the Surge so that I can use Fly outside of battle. I've got a level advantage and Body Slam, so there's not much substance to this battle, but it feels pretty great that the difficulty of the run is about to start going down for a little bit. From there, I go to the Rocket Hideout. I'm doing a similar strategy like I usually do. I'm picking up the extra high money items that I can, and I'll be utilizing it in a different strategy later, but the idea is the same as always. As far as Giovanni goes, I've been playing in the background, and I have decent answers for his whole team, and it's another easy mid-game battle. Perfect. Now, speaking of easy, here's rival number four. It's an extremely easy fight, but I will highlight one of my concerns after Misty, and that's the fact that it's another one of those runs where I don't have a great answer for Gyarados, and we'll be seeing Gary a ton in this video. When I'm done with that, I head down to Fuchsia. Now, I'm still grabbing the money items, but I do teach Reflect here temporarily because, honestly, I'm just out of bag space, but I am able to get the final HMs of the run. Surf is significantly stronger than most moves that Kabuto learns, so it's a pretty big help. Next up is Koga because Papa wants that sweet speed portion of the badge boost. The idea going in was pretty simple. It sounds solid, right? I set up Reflect and couple that with my high defense means that I can just tank anything, and then from there I can just set up for those extra attack badge boosts to sweep through the fight. And what ends up happening is I just get poisoned early and I'm just slowly dying in a death of attrition as I get chipped and whittled down and I don't even get to see the wheezing in the first attempt. And this goes on for a little bit. I do make it further but I just don't have enough HP and I can't seem to find that balance of setting up and comfortably being able to do the fight. I have two more attempts where I just go down and I was honestly a little bit sad that my brilliant reflect mid game strategy didn't make this as easy as I hoped but everything else in the run was also like this. Brock and Misty so it's only fitting that it happens to Koga too, right? On the fourth attempt, I set up on the muck since I do level up after the first coughing, and my only commentary on this successful attempt is that I just kind of do it. I just guess I get a little lucky, I don't take that much damage at all, and I'm able to fully set up without getting poisoned, without getting chipped down, so that makes the path to victory that much easier. I would have liked to have seen what a self-destruct would do into my resisted rock typing and the reflect, but it just never happens overall, but the reflect strategy was kind of a failure. From there, there's been some trouble in the run, so I do what everybody does. I go and I talk to my mom. Then I take a nice, brisk swim down to Cinnabar, and I've been watching some world record speedruns, so something I thought I'd mention here is that if you buy some extra repels and go straight down to the Pokemon Mansion, you can save some time. This week I am battling extra trainers inside of Blaine's Gym, and you do learn Slash. It's a little bit late in the run, and it's not going to stick around for long, but I do think it's worth mentioning. I like Slash, just like I like Turtles. And finally, after a little bit of Tombstoner, brother. It's time for Blaine, and I'm here for obvious reasons. I have Surf in the moveset, and I double resist fire moves. Blaine doesn't really have good AI, so it doesn't matter. He might still use fire moves, but overall, it's a very easy battle, and getting that special portion of the badge boost is also a very great thing, since some of our strongest attacks are special. Now it's time for Silfco. I go to the 10th floor to get the rare candy, and I do battle some extra trainers to manipulate my experience for the upcoming battle. And that brings us to Rival number five and let's just queue up the music and see how it goes. On attempt number one I'm having deja vu. I want to set up here and did I do the same exact thing earlier if you remember and I just took a bunch of sand attacks. Well guys the same thing happens here. I don't learn from my mistakes and after taking three more sand attacks I just reset because no one wants to do this battle. On attempt number two I just go straight body slam. That's all I want to do. I want to take it out. I'll set up later. Now that's the best strategy and it's going all right until I get hit with a single sand attack. From there I miss. Then I get hit with another sand attack. And then I just miss more and more and I'm resetting again. Now sand attack, sand attack's just really the most bullshit move in the entire game. Evasion moves in general are just really cheap and that's why I never use them in my run. And if you're somebody who uses double team in your runs, good for you because I'm positive I'm not going to say anything bad. On tip number three, I remember suddenly that I have slash and I just use it. It does more damage than body slam when you're not setting up and that means it's a two shot and that gives me a much higher chance of avoiding sand attacks. Now I take it out. Now girl, let me see that Gyarados. Like I said earlier, I don't have a great answer here. Hydro Pump would pump my cheeks, but thankfully it misses and two slashes can get me past this one. So I'd say that's pretty lucky, but we'll see later. We'll talk more about Gyarados later. Next up is Growlithe, and this is where I can finally set up. I do waste a turn, but it doesn't matter because it's Growlithe. It's pathetic. It doesn't matter. Let's just move on. Alakazam next. I'm suited. I'm booted and I'm boosted, and that means I can take it out with a single body slam.
Slam. Last up is Venusaur, and I haven't once in this run mentioned one of Kabuto's biggest critical flaws. I skipped Erica for a reason, and that's because I'm double weak to grass. On this attempt, Body Slam does not one-shot the Venusaur, and this Razor Leaf right here could murder an entire party of Kabutos. And you might be saying, Matt, you have Ice Beam, why not just use it? And that's a pretty good idea, little Jimmy. But I will say that, just like the Zubat run, I'm kind of hanging on to some TMs because the late game is where I'm worried about, and I don't want to waste any of them, but let's just jump ahead to the next one. On the next attempt, you can see that Slash is a range on the Gyarados, and we get a tiny glimpse into the future, and we get to see what Hydro Pump does. It doesn't feel great, and even though I can survive one, I just can't get it down fast enough, and I die like the isopod dog that I am. I take another Razor Leaf on the next attempt, and honestly, I could probably be level 100 and still die to this Razor Leaf, so it's really not a problem if I tank a Hydro Pump earlier in the fight. And finally, that takes us to the last attempt and it all comes down to luck. If it uses Razor Leaf at any point in time, I'm dead, but in this case I use Body Slam, it uses Leech Seed, and then I take it out the next turn. Needless to say that this fight highlights a lot of upcoming problems for Kabuto and it kind of lets us know some of the things that we need to look out for. This wasn't a great fight and this is about the time my little lizard brain kind of cooked up a strategy to see if I could salvage a good time because believe it or not, even with the problems we had, our in-game time is actually pretty decent and you guys know that I'm always trying to get the best run out of the Pokemons that I can. Now let's save some time, we'll skip over Giovanni number two and we'll go straight to Sabrina instead and we'll just knock this one out real quick. Now Slash is really good here, you already know. It can handle everything very easy and even though I fail to knock out that Venomoth in one hit and it paralyzes me, the Alakazam just goes for a reflect and since crits will ignore that anyway, Slash is good enough to move us on and that's another badge down. Now let's quickly clean up that seventh badge and it's Erica for this run. We've already seen what grass can do to us and it's not really a secret why I held off on this one for so long. Coming here at nearly double their level just ensures that I can both outspeed and one shot each of her Pokemon but I guarantee you guys that a Razor Leaf even though I'm double the level of Victory Bell would still probably one shot me but I don't want to find out. Now with that done we can get to the new strategy of the run. Now I'm at the game corner, I'm chilling, I'm getting coins and you might be be able to guess what I'm gonna do for this run. For the very first time, I'm gonna get Substitute and see if I can just literally hide behind a Pokedaw to mask our weaknesses. And I'm hoping that maybe we can get past some late game fights that would otherwise need to level up a bunch on. That's the general idea anyway. And I just can't stress enough how long it takes to get these coins. You have to do 50 at a time and it's a real slog. The goal here is to get to 7,700 coins and this takes me 154,000 Pokedollars if you're wondering. Like I said earlier, I didn't do that much testing on Kabuto. I definitely didn't do a bunch of runs and after messing around with the start, I just had to stick with this run or spend hours on other runs. But since it was clear that Kabuto wasn't going to compete for like a sub four hour time or like a top 10 spot, I was totally fine with this because this is a learning experience for all of us. So enjoy the one time you'll probably see Substitute on the channel. And to be honest, thinking back, Zubat probably could have benefited greatly from Substitute, but I'm never going to do another Zubat run, so just use your imagination. Now let's quickly clean up the badge portion of the game. Giovanni is a joke since I have Surf, and in this instance I do just play it safe. I set up on the right horn, and that ensures that my Surf is just going to slice through his entire team to cap off the regular season portion of the game, and now it's on to those final six battles. First up is rival number six, and here I'm just going to go ahead and learn Substitute, and we're going to give it a little test run, since rival number five is pretty fresh on my mind, and I'm worried about this one a lot but let's just take a look and we'll see how it goes. First up is Pidgeot. This is the point of the game where there isn't any more sand attacks and thank God for that. This means that I can fairly safely set up Substitute and then go for my Hardens for Badge Boost. High Defense and resisting all of its attacks means that this one isn't an issue at all and even though Body Slam at the end isn't enough to one shot it, I can still get through this one fairly easy. Now next up is Rhyhorn. Surf is all you need to know. Let's go to more important things. Now we get another glimpse at Gyarados. I'm set it up and I go first and a body slam does not one shot it and I get hit with a hydro pump or should I say my substitute gets hit with a hydro pump and it breaks so this means that I haven't taken any extra damage and I can take it out in the next turn while I'm still at decent health now since substitute only takes 25% of your health to use this is a much better way to get past this fight and it works pretty great here Growth is the next Pokemon and it's weak to serve I do set up one more substitute for some insurance later in the fight but we can just move on Alakazam comes in and I can outspeed it and it's a one
one shot with the body slam but there's one very bad thing that happens here and it's the fact that I level up I lose my badge boost and we're going into the worst part of the fight this means my damage is now very pathetic on the Venusaur and I futilely try to keep setting up some substitutes but eventually it gets to the point where even like a blade of grass could take us out and the untimely level up is a huge problem now I do try several more times and they all end the exact same way the leveling up really holds us back and unless I want to try this like 300 times and hope for the most godlike luck at the end of the fight something has to change but the solution here is very simple all you gotta do is use one rare candy and that'll reset our experience and this means that I can hopefully keep my boost going into the end of the fight now there's no reason to show the first part of the fight again because honestly substitute makes the Gyarados very consistent so let's just cut ahead to the end of our first rare candy attempt I take out the Alakazam and I don't level up so that's great and let's see Venusaur substitute is already up I'm boosted and that means body slam does much better damage now this means that I can two shot it and on its turn it does break the substitute with a super effective move but I am able just to body slam it down and take this battle and this one wasn't great but substitute worked pretty much exactly how I wanted it to and you can see how it's gonna come in handy and how I want to utilize it and I'm hoping that this can allow us to have a much easier time on these final fight. Looking ahead at the Elite Four, there's pretty much three huge problems and two of them are Gyarados. The other one is also the Venusaur on the Champions team and we've already kind of seen what it can do. If I get hit with the Razor Leaf, probably even a Bind Whip or anything really, I'm dead. Also keep in mind that I'm only doing neutral damage on Lorelei. I don't have a great answer for Agatha overall and I'm also weak to fighting moves so the equation that's going to take us to victory just really isn't that clear cut on this run. I use all but a few of my rare candies going into the league and let's not really stall anymore let's just jump into it and let's take a look at Lorelei. The key things for this matchup is that I resist normal and ice which means that the dugong's only going to use rest since I resist everything else. I can very safely set up here and even though it does take an extra move because it's going to use rest no matter what this one is still very clean and you really can't mess this one up. I also set up a substitute just in case and we move on pretty easy. I'm boosted and on the cloister surface doing over half half its health so that's great. It misses a clamp but I was already behind a substitute anyway and I promptly take it out right after that. Slowbro's up next. Water Gun could do all right neutral damage but the boost means it's not that bad either way and we can just keep cruising along. Then comes in the Jinx. It's physically frail. One body slam is all that I need. Finally at the end is Lapras. Since I still have a sub set up this one isn't too bad. Lorelei really likes to crit and Hydro Pump would hurt very bad but I'm feeling pretty safe behind my Pokedaw and that means some body slams can take this one out. This one was very clean and it was a first try victory. There's going to be no more reason to show Lorelai so everybody say goodbye to Lorelai. Now we got Bruno who's picked up some confidence in recent weeks but once again let's put him back in his place. Now Kabuto's not the strongest Pokemon but you don't have to be to take out Bruno. The key thing here and that you guys can learn from me in my past lessons is that don't use body slam on the Hitmonchan. You don't want to get hit with that counter. I just go for some surfs here and this one's very fast and very painless and we can just keep it rolling. Next up is Agatha and let's just quickly dive into it. The interesting thing about Substitute is that you can't be confused while you're behind one. Unfortunately you can be put to sleep but let's not talk about that just yet. I do take a Nightshade, I set up a sub and then I get to work. I do set up some Hardens and after not dealing with anything annoying I'm able to surf it a couple of times and take it out in the end. Golbat is up next. The sub is still up but I didn't fully set up so Body Slam is not a one shot. It goes for a wing attack but since it's resisted that means the substitute does not break and I can finish it off on the next turn. Unfortunately I do level up. I lose my boost and that's all on me. I forgot to use a rare candy here. This means that I'm slower. I get put to sleep and from there it's only a matter of time before my substitute's broken and I'm taken out. Now this one's a blunder on my part. It really wasn't that bad. Let's just go straight to the next attempt. From here on out I probably forget. I'm gonna call substitute toot. So I set up my toot and then she makes a very aggressive swap to the goal bat but I still want to set up a little bit and it turns out to work great. It goes for a supersonic and I'm able to take it out with some body slam shortly after that. Now Gengar comes back in. I set up another Harden and once again Agatha makes a very quick swap over to the Haunter and Agatha's feeling really swappy today guys. At this point I'm set up enough and I'm feeling safe behind my toot and two surfs can take this one out and then the first Gengar comes back in and once again I'm set up and surfs are just going to be able to take it out. Arbok is next and just to be safe I do want to set up just a little bit more but for the third time in this battle she makes yet another aggressive swap into the final Gengar and from 
that point, I'm really boosted and I'm able just to clean up this fight. Being behind a toot means that I'm really safe and I can just cruise through to the victory. And you guys can see that Agatha honestly wasn't too bad. I failed once just because I forgot to use the rare candy and I leveled up mid battle, but I was able to get it down on my first attempt after that. But guys, things are about to change. Now I thought substitute was a brilliant idea and I only got the move for one very specific part and that's Lance's Gyarados. I do learn Blizzard because I thought that this was going to be the play at this point. So we're sitting here with Harden for the badge boost, Substitute to hide, Blizzard for the dragons, and Surf because I can't get rid of it. And the first attempt's kind of just embarrassing. I set up a toot, Hydro Pump breaks it, and then I desperately try to set up. I waste some turns and I promptly just get taken out. I fell a lot on this fight. The problem is that I just don't do enough damage. Even if Gyarados misses like two Hydro Pumps, Blizzard's just really weak and it was a mistake to learn it right here on this fight. It's not great at all and the dreams of having a pretty decent run kind of die right here. I'm not going to show all these failures because there's a ton, but there is one time that I'll show where I actually make it past Lance and it was just pure luck. I get the lucky freeze proc on the Gyarados and it's just an auto win. I'm not a fan of luck. I've become a little bit more open to it, but I don't know how comfortable I would be with a 10% chance if I were to just go on and win the entire Elite Four right here. But spoiler alert, I don't. I'm not going to show the champion fight after this, but I did fail and we're back to square one. Eventually I go back to body slam because that's the only way I can think of at this point to get by the fight. But here's a kind of a funny attempt where I use substitute four times and I kill myself. Usually the game doesn't let you do this, but I guess since I was at exactly 25% of my health, or maybe it was like a rounding thing, it actually let me do it. So here's that clip for you guys. Here you can see just how little damage body slam does. And it's clear that I can't get through this fight in my current state and I have to make some changes. So from there, I start widening out, keeping the experience, and for the first time in a long time, we have to start leveling up. And guys, I'm just going to spare you the bullshit. This is very time consuming, and I'll show the typical failures that keep happening all the way up to level 69. Nice. This fight really made me remember why Gyarados is such a huge pain, and I spent a lot of time here grinding and grinding, and thanks to the power of video editing, I'll just skip ahead to the level that actually worked, and finally what sort of gets me past this nightmarish hell that I was in. I ended up having to go really high and you can see even more attempts at level 71 that really wasn't even that close to being doable. I still fail a ton and at this point I'm pretty much pulling my hair out and I'm kind of I'm self-aware enough to know that it would be an incredibly boring video to watch eight levels worth of constant failures and I think that would make a pretty bad video so let's just finally skip ahead to what was needed to be successful here and that magical level turns out to be level 73. This is where I was able to have some good attempts. The funny part is that substitute wasn't really even a factor. I toot twice and it breaks twice and from there I just go for body slam. The key part about level 73 is that this is the range where you can two shot the Gyarados which means that even if you get hit you can just tank it. So you go turn one hit it with body slam it hits you with a hydro pump you knock it out with a body slam. Here I do get extremely lucky I paralyze it it skips its turn and I'm able to get past. Now from there things aren't too much of a challenge and you kind of expect that on runs where you have to level up this high to get past Gyarados. Since I resist normal moves and Lance has good AI that means the first Dragonair will only spam agility and that allows me to set up. And once I'm set up I just put out a toot, I hide behind it and I take out the rest of his team. It really wasn't too bad overall. You just have to level up about 13 times and spend a couple of hours guys. Afterwards I do get rid of Body Slam in favor of Blizzard and I use my PP ups on it so let's just get straight into that champion fight. Now the goal here is clear from the start of the fight. I resist everything the Pidgeot's got and I want to fully set up the badge boost and have a substitute set up going forward to the next Pokemon. That's exactly what happens and I do take a decent amount of chip damage back but that's all part of the master plan. Alakazam is next and with a boost Surf does some pretty impressive damage but what's even more impressive is that the substitute doesn't break when I get hit with the side beam. I'm able to take it out and progress. Rhydon isn't interesting. It's double weak to Surf. That's all anybody needs to know. Next up is a higher level Gyarados than before, but the difference this time is that I have a substitute pre-set up and I'm fully boosted. Blizzard does heavy damage and then Gyarados breaks the substitute with Hydro Pump and I take it out on the turn after with a Surf. Next up is Arcanine and all I can say is thank God for the order of this fight. If Gyarados was next to last instead and I didn't get this opportunity to set up another substitute, this one might have been a little bit tougher, but either way it's weak to Surf and I take it out. Let's look at the end. And I kind of just lied to you guys because
because the substitute was not a factor for this because I outspeed and Blizzard can one shot this little frog and we can take the battle and that's it. I honestly kind of felt pretty good getting to do one of these bad runs because it's been kind of a while. Going back to these always kind of makes me think outside of the box and I had some fun doing this one but how bad was it? Let's just take a look at the stats real quick. Kabuto finishes with a level of 74 but more importantly it finishes with an end game time of 5 hours and 45 minutes. Now looking at the time it honestly doesn't look that bad and I'll bring up the tier list later but first let's talk about a few things. Since the other egg move runs were so successful and you guys like it I'm always kind of on the lookout for good candidates but I do want to do the regular run first just so we can see how much it actually improves because that makes sense right? After looking at the run and doing some initial testing I thought that egg move Kabuto run would allow it to be pretty good it would get past Brock really quick and improve the run just enough to warrant a video but even with all those egg moves you still really got nothing to deal with Gyarados and that's the one huge problem of the run. It does get rock throw but let's be real rock throw is so bad but with all that said 5 hours and 45 minutes kind of puts it in a unique and untapped portion of the tier list. I haven't had any late 5 hour runs but I'm just going to lump it in here with the green area behind Jigglypuff and Sandshrew but I will make it slightly darker green to, to prove that it's a little bit worse. It was an interesting run and it was my first time using substitute so that's pretty valuable experience for later. I think making a modification to my ROM to maybe making the game corner sell you 500 coins for 10,000 Poke Dollars rather than having to do it 50 at a time and I say that because I think that some of these worst runs that can utilize Hyper Beam or utilize Substitute they'll just have a much better time overall. Now I'm not sure how I really think about it I'm just kind of spitballing here but if you guys have any thoughts on that I'd really like to hear it as well because I think it's kind of interesting. Anyways that's about all I have for you guys today. I kind of forgot how much raw footage and how much more time these slower runs take so we're just going to end it here and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and all the positive vibes that your heart desires and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye!